What's up you guys, it is Kotetsu here, and today we just had State of Play happen. Like, just now, it just got done happening. And so, as of recording, it just finished. So, we're gonna talk about it. And I'm not gonna go into the entire thing, because it was pretty long, we got to see some great games on there, but I'm going to pick my highlights, the ones that got me hyped and the ones that made me cry, because yes, I cry when I see games that I've been waiting for or games that I would never ever expect. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure you guys leave a like, share, and subscribe. And also make sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash Kotetsu Tokai because that's when I'm going to be streaming there again. Probably today, as you guys are watching this, as of uploading, I'm going to be streaming today. So keep a lookout. Watch out for that. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's get started. So they, the first game is the first, the first game I'm going to talk about is the first game they kicked off the show with and it was a game that I've been hearing about that's going to be happening and I'm currently going through and playing the original right now and they announced Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic remake. This is a remake of the first game and I honestly can't wait for it. This is probably one of my favorite Star Wars RPG um, series of all time. I played one and two when I was younger. Like I said, I'm playing through the first one right now, and I cannot wait to see more on this awesome RPG that's going to be coming out. Who knows? But hopefully next year, we'll probably see more stuff next year, but I can't wait. I, I honestly cannot wait for this one, man. The next game they showed off was a game called Project Eve. It started off, the game trailer started off pretty crazy. Uh, and then they showed off some gameplay. It is by a Korean developer. Um, I'm, I forgot what the, the name of it was, but it does look interesting. I think I've seen something like that before, or if that was the game I did see. But it looked pretty, it looked interesting. It looks like one of those like soul type games, just for where the camera's positioned and everything. Uh, and you know, all the crazy bosses. It looks like kind of like a soul inspired game. I'm not sure, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't really make a speculation on that. Don't take my word on it either. Uh, but it looks cool. It looks like a great game to, to, to pick up uh, when it does get released or when it does get a release date or, you know, whenever it does come up. It looks, it, look, it does look interesting. Tiny Tina's Wonder, Wonder, I almost said Wonder World, <laughs> Wonderland. I remember seeing this first announced, I think it was uh, the day before E3, uh, when they had their opening night or something like that, they had an opening night, I think, and they showed off the game. They showed off the trailer of it, and uh, the, today they showed off gameplay, which is cool because they literally said it, she literally was like, "Why do I have guns in a fantasy world?" and just didn't really give an explanation on it. But I think that's just the point of it, you know, the wackiness of that series, and it looks interesting. It looks fun. I saw some cool swords in there, so I'm always down for stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it, lo it looks fun. It looks really crazy, unorthodox, and I'm always down for games exactly like that. That's why I'm kind of big into Borderlands right now. But yeah, Tiny Tina's Wonderland looks great. The next game that I'm going to be talking about is called is that is called is named Ghost Wire. I said that weird, but we're gonna keep going. <laughs> um, this is a game that we've been hearing about for a long time, and we haven't really gotten any information on it. I think we saw a trailer last year, I think, if I'm correct. Uh, but we haven't, we didn't really see any gameplay. We don't, we didn't know what it was. And seeing it now, it definitely looks like an inter uh, an interesting game for itself. Itself, like it's just, it's a first person game first person and you have like weird psychic powers and it, it's just it's very unexplained but it looks very interesting and something that really does catch my eye that I might have to give a shot give it a shot when I do get a chance to see it but it looks cool I can't wait and uh, you know we'll see and hear more when they decide to give us more
Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, if you guys saw my reaction trailer at E3, you guys saw that I flipped out over this game. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I love Marvel. I've been recently going through all of Marvel comics and just reading up on all of them, and the fact that I'm doing that makes me appreciate Marvel even more, or the, the world of Marvel even more. And to see that Guardians is going to be that next big, uh, the next big Marvel game before we get to the other ones I'm going to talk about uh, today. Um, it's it's really cool. Um, I, yes, you can only play as Star Lord, but I mean, I think that's I, that's fine with me. I'm still going to enjoy the game um, regardless if I can play as anyone else or not. But Guardians of the Galaxy, I think this year in October, can't wait for it. Now, there's another game that I have that uh, I'm just not being able to talk today, but this is another game that's been on my radar since I've heard of it, uh, Forspoken. It was announced, I think, last year under the name of Project Atlas, I think it was, and I think either this year or the end of last year at the Game Awards, they ended up uh, giving it a, a proper title called Forspoken. And it looks great. I remember seeing gameplay for it for the first time. It looked cool. And then we saw it again. It looked amazing. And then now we're seeing it again today. Just more and more. It just looks really good. Now, we don't know when this game is coming out. I want to say probably beginning of next year or sometime in the middle of next year. But, uh, yeah, it looks great. And uh, I honestly can't wait to play this game and see what the story and get to be able to relate to this character because I know I will, and uh, I would. I, I I just can't wait to play. It looks it looks amazing. Now this was like now all the list all the games that I listed. This was like kind of like their first half, and then they took a little bit of an intermission and they said that we have a lot of exclusives here. Now I think most of the exclusives that I mentioned are the exclusives that were mentioned there. I I don't think I skipped any, but. This is the second half of this list here, and there's some big ones here. So the first game they show, I, th no, the first game, it wasn't the first game. The, the game that they showed after the game I'm going to talk about is uh, Gran Turismo 7. Now, I've always said this about all racing games on all generations. Racing games on any generation of consoles don't matter if it was the the PlayStation, the PS2, the the PS3 doesn't matter. They all looked amazing, better than any game that I've ever played. They always look. It's so close to being real. And Gran Turismo 7 is definitely the the racing game that looks so close to being such so real. Like, I was watching it, and for a second, I forgot that I'm looking at gameplay, not an actual race. You know what I mean? Just how, just the way the light just reflects off the cars, how detailed everything is. It just looks so amazing, and it's definitely gonna, it definitely caught my eye. Just like Forza, Forza 5 did at E3, this one definitely caught my eye, so... I, I'm gonna have to watch out for it, you know. I'm always down for racing games because they kind of put me in like a chill mood. So definitely gonna keep my eye on uh, Gran Turismo 7 when that does drop. Now this one was such a huge surprise. It definitely caught me off guard because when I first saw it, the, my first my first reaction was, oh, "It's Spider Man! It's Spider Man!" But then they set the scene he's in a bar and then you see the only person sitting in the bar my reaction was this is freaking Wolverine because Wolverine is the only Marvel character I'm getting loud is the only Marvel character who will start a bar fight for no reason and will just or or just not even start it will just attract a bar fight for no reason and the and it's Gosh, like if you don't know X Men, you don't know Wolverine, and you saw that, you would you would say, "What is this?" Until he popped the claws. Like when he would, when they showed his hand, I was like, "Dude, pop the claws!" So he could just tell me it's Wolverine, and he popped them, and I was just like, "Yo, this is Wolverine. We're getting a Wolverine game." And it's by Insomniac, who's been just killing it 
with these awesome uh, Marvel games, you know, next to Square Enix. Like I said, I love Guardians when it comes. I'm going to love Guardians. I'm, I love Marvel, but yo, Wolverine game. Let's go. I cannot wait. The next Insomniac Marvel game that they showed off was Spider-Man 2. They could not show us Wolverine without showing us Spider-Man 2. They couldn't do that to us. They wouldn't do that to us. That'd be messed up if they did that to us, but we saw it. I don't know if the trailer was showing a little bit of gameplay, a little bit of, you know, the, uh, just the, uh, like, uh, their own, uh, cinematic. I'm not sure, but we did see Miles Morales and Peter Parker. Uh, Peter Parker having some new gadgets. He has the, the, he has the, um, the, the legs, the spidey legs that he gets from the iron spider suit in the past game. And, you know, you see, uh, Miles Morales with a new move. Looks like, like a weird, like, force push or, or something that he knocked the enemy down. But then in the back, you hear Craven. So I'm like, yo, they put Craven in the game. Craven's getting his shine in a game. Craven is another one of Spider-Man's, probably his one of his dangerous enemies, you know, because Craven is all about the hunt. You know, he's always about do or die. And then, excuse me, and then in the, once Craven is like, I think his line, he says, can you provide me with that challenge? And it's just a pause. And you hear Venom, and I forgot that Venom was a t was teased in the end of Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man. And of course, Venom is not Eddie Brock. Venom is Harry, or or you know what? We don't know. There's not. It's not 100%. It could be just. They could have just played us. It could have been, you know, Harry was cured, and the and then the the symbiote jumped to someone else. But then, oh man, there's just so many possibilities they can do with that, which I might do a separate video about later about what they can probably do with spider-man but yo spider-man 2 2023 i can wait give me the best spider-man game give me a game that was better than the last two spider-man games give me that take all the time you need to give me that and of course the last but definitely not least uh game that they showed off and went in a little bit more detail on afterwards was God of War 2 or not God of War 2 God of War Ragnarok now they showed off this they announced this game or teased it last year at their at their state of play last year and um, we didn't get too much on it but we know that it was going to take place during Ragnarok obviously well not obviously because it probably could have just been a name but they they stated that they didn't just Ragnarok isn't just a title. It's going to be happening during the event of God of War. So we got some gameplay. We see some new stuff. You see, you know, um, um, Atreus, I think that's his name. Um, a little bit older. You see a little bit of the tension between him and Kratos. And we see some new characters. And we get to see Thor. Or Thor's hammer. And, uh, and, and it's the Norse Thor. Norse mythology Thor. Not the Marvel Thor. The Norse Thor. We got to see him. And uh, it's just, it looks, it looks great. I cannot wait for that either. I love God of War, the last God of War we got. I played every single God of War. Yes, even the PSP ones. I played every single God of War game. So I have to, I have to stick with it. I got to. They've all been great. So this one is definitely not going to, I feel this one won't disappoint. It looks great. Um, it, it, I'm sure it's going to play amazing, especially on the new controllers and everything. So it's going to be awesome. So. Uh, we'll, we'll hear on that. We don't. I don't think they dropped the date, but we'll definitely know more information within the the rest of this year and, of course, next year. So that is it, you guys. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed my excitement for all the games that they showed up. This one was definitely better than last month, like in July. July was. We had some good stuff in July, but there was nothing really heavy hitting. Let me know what you guys are excited for. I know they had other games that weren't on this list that I saw that were pretty cool. I just thought I wanted to talk about those that I was pretty excited about or that now are on my radar uh, when they when they do get more information on. But I want to know what you guys think, what you guys are excited for. Did you guys catch it? Did you guys catch it live? Did you guys catch a post? And just let, uh, let me know what you guys um, are excited for and what you would like to probably see on here on this channel when, if they do drop. But let me know. Make sure you guys like, skip, share, and subscribe. I'm going to be live streaming today. Make sure you guys catch that at twitch.tv slash Kotetsu Tokai. Make sure you guys catch that. And I will see you guys then.
or I will see you guys next time. You guys take care.